Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. We live next to the small river called the Vermilion River. Recently, my friend Joe from Michigan came down. We did a survey of the mussels in the river. Joe is an expert in the area, so it is great to have him to give us a hand. The goal of my channel is to promote a fast cooking system, which is flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking so that we can make home cooking as part of the daily routine. Now, stir frying is the primary cooking method for this cooking system. Stir frying is extremely efficient and practical. It is one of the cooking systems that can be used to cook almost anything that you want. With stir frying, when it combined with the other aspects of the cooking system, it's possible to put a meal on the table in less than 30 minutes using all fresh ingredients cooked from scratch. In the case of stir frying, the most important thing about stir frying is to have a proper wok. There are many different types of woks available on the market, and sometimes it could be quite confusing. One of the most popular woks that are available today is the wok maker of material known as carbon steel. Uh, this type of wok uh, usually comes without non-stick coating, which we call it with a natural surface. A carbon steel wok can be quite inexpensive, and this is the reason for its popularity. And recently, for example, I purchased a carbon steel wok from the supermarket Audi for $15. Now, carbon steel wok can be ranged quite a bit in price. Some of the carbon steel wok can be quite expensive. However, uh, one of the reasons carbon steel wok is so popular is because it is relatively uh, simple to reproduce. And the end result is that you can make carbon steel wok uh, with a very low cost. And carbon steel wok is an excellent conductor for heat. So it heats up evenly. And carbon steel wok lasts for a long time. Uh, many people can have a carbon steel wok last for generations. However, today, uh, choosing a carbon steel wok is much more challenging than before because now the market is flooded with all different kinds of carbon steel wok and they um, come from many different companies. This carbon steel wok uh, range widely in terms of its price. Uh, some can be very expensive, where some can be very inexpensive. For example, the most expensive carbon steel wok, uh, this one costs $280 uh, because this carbon steel wok is known as a hand hammer wok. It is created by artisans, use ancient method. Uh, however, all carbon steel wok really behave pretty much the same. In fact, I find that carbon steel wok really do not differ very much in terms of their functionality when it comes to price. You can purchase a $10 carbon steel wok. If it is well built, uh, it can last and perform as well as the carbon steel wok that might cost several hundred dollars. So what is the criteria of a good carbon steel wok? A uh, most important criteria of carbon steel wok is its construction. Carbon steel wok vary in terms of thickness, and this thickness sometimes refers to as gauge. A heavy gauge carbon steel wok uh, is a little bit thicker than carbon steel wok that has a light gauge. Now, carbon steel wok uh, can be uh, very uh, easy and uh, to set up. For example, this carbon steel wok, when I purchase it, uh, it's all ready to be used. The only important thing is that I have to scrub it because carbon steel wok uh, can't rust. So during shipping, uh, the manufacturer usually coat the carbon steel wok with a layer of uh, oily material to prevent the wok from rusting. So you need to make sure we remove this oily layer because quite often this oily layer uh, is not edible. So it is important for you to clean it thoroughly. Uh, quite often I will clean it with a scrubbing agent such as a Comet and then I will use a heavy duty scrub pad. And you might want to scrub it several times in order to remove all that oily coating. Now, uh, when you know that you are properly removed it, is that you will rinse your carbon steel wok with water. And rinsing it with water uh, will allow you to have a gauge of how well you have cleaned the wok. If the water starts to run clear after each time when you scrub it, you know you have removed all the oily material and now you are ready to use your wok. Now, carbon steel wok is excellent from many, many different standpoints. One of the, um, the important things about carbon steel wok people need to pay attention to is that what type of uh, stove that you're going to use on. One thing about carbon steel wok is that when you heat it up, it can undergo slight change in its shape. 
and quite often the center part of the carbon steel wall uh, might able might be bulged from the remaining part of the wall. Now this could be a problem because what happened is that um, the slight uh, change in shape can cause the carbon steel wall to wobble, particularly when you cook it on a flat surface. What kind of flat surface? Uh, there are two types. One is an uh, electric glass top uh, stove, which have a completely flat surface. Another one is an induction stove, also have a flat surface. Now, in this case, the wobbling uh, can be difficult for you to manage the walk. And so one way to change that is that put your walk on a surface that are protected by material. While the walk is still hot, use a hammer, a slightly tap in the center part of the walk because that's usually where um, the bulging will occur. Now you can immediately put it back onto the stove and check it, see whether it will remain stable. Uh, using this method, you can continue to make modification to the bottom surface of the walk so that you can make sure your walk is properly level in this case. And uh, once you do this a couple times, you will find that your walk will perform without any problem at all. So a carbon steel walk uh, normally will only have problem with flat surface. Now, if you cook on a gas top because the way how the uh, frame is arranged, then in this case, you don't have to worry about it at all. But on a flat surface, that's something you definitely need to have some uh, consideration. Now, another thing about carbon steel wall I like to mention to you is that you can season your carbon steel wall uh, easily using a method which I call it the spot seasoning method, because which means that you can season it right on the spot. In this method, it is very simple. All you have to do is to put about a couple tablespoons of oil uh, into the wok. You let the oil to heat up until it starts to smoke gently, and then you turn down the heat. You let the oil to smoke another 15 to 30 seconds, and this is the time when the wok is being seasoned. Now, this method works extremely well. Uh, you only need to season the bottom surface of the wall. You don't need to season the side of the wall or the bottom or the back side of the wall. Uh, those part of the wall, because the way how it is being used, it will never have problem. Uh, particularly when you stir fry, uh, your foot is not going to get in touch with the side of the wall. However, the side of the wall will be coated by a thin layer of oil film to uh, prevent it from rusting because the, when the oil rises from the bottom, it will also coat the back surface of the wok. Uh, using this method, uh, you will create a non-stick cooked surface easily, and the best way to test that uh, is to fry an egg in it, uh, because frying egg is usually is a most challenging test to uh, see whether your wok is well seasoned in creating a non-stick cooked surface. Now, when you get this wok from the manufacturer, they usually will provide you with instructions of how to season the wok. And most of the time, you will find the method to be cumbersome, elaborate, and sometimes it's almost unreasonable. For example, uh, one method described by the manufacturer is that they ask you to paint the entire surface of the wok inside and outside with a thin layer of coke, uh, oil then you put it on a stove, uh, then you will heat up the wok for up to 30 to 45 minutes. And then, of course, during that time, you will generate a lot of oil film, and it will make your kitchen very oily. Now, uh, this method turned out to be really not essential or not necessary, because the method that I show you with the spot seasoning method will allow you to create a non-stick cook surface right in the center part of the wok because basically you don't need to uh, season the side of the wok. And another method that the frequently just suggests is that uh, you actually coat the wok with oil and then you put it into the oven and you uh, bake the wok for about an hour. Again, uh, this is not necessary uh, because uh, uh, you do not need to go through, you do not season the side as well as the bottom surface of the wok. Now, the method that I use will allow you to create uh, a non-stick cook surface using this seasoning method. So each time when you're ready to cook, you can always do it again. Uh, this will allow you to guarantee that you will have a well-seasoned wok. Now, another thing you will notice that with a carbon steel wok is that 
after you cook it for a while, particularly when you heat it in oil, you will notice that the bottom of the wok will start to turn brown. And the reason is due to carbonaceous material from the oil that settle to the bottom and burn to the surface of the wok. And this process will occur with any type of uh, cookware that with a natural surface. Uh, this includes uh, carbon steel, of course, which I've shown here, but it also includes cast iron, light cast iron, and stainless steel. Uh, this process of accumulation is a natural process, but a lot of time uh, people call it patina because of the color, and sometimes people associate this patina color with the seasoning of the wok. But in reality, it actually has nothing to do with the seasoning. The color is just the accumulation. One easy way to demonstrate that, if you uh, use a wok that, uh, with this coloration and you boil the water in the wok, you will find that the wok will lose its nonstick property, but the color of this patina remain on the surface of the wok. In this case, uh, when you fry an egg, you will find that the egg will stick to the surface of the wok. Uh, because boiling will remove that oil film. And this is equally true uh, when you cook food with a uh, high acidic content. This will also uh, remove the oil film. So under those circumstances, uh, it is important for you to keep in mind after you say, for example, uh, use your wok for boiling water, you want to make sure uh, to uh, use a paper towel to apply a thin layer of cooking oil on the surface a bit will allow you to prevent uh, the wok from rusting. All in all, a carbon steel wok is less flexible than a stainless steel wok because of its um, tendency uh, to rust. Now, a stainless steel wok, you can do almost anything to it. You don't have to worry about applying oil because it will not rust. But you can use the carbon steel wok in almost exactly the same way as a stainless steel wok for boiling water, for steaming, uh, for cooking spaghetti sauce, as long as you remember that after you are using in those type of cooking situation, make sure you cover it with a thin layer of oil film. Carbon steel wok in many ways uh, is an excellent cooking surface, partly because of its cost. It is very inexpensive and it is very durable. It is also durable. Uh, carbon steel wok quite often can be passed from one generation to the next. Now, I personally prefer a stainless steel wok uh, because I do not have to worry that much about it and also with stainless steel wok it's easy for me to keep it clean and spotless whereas carbon steel wok is less so. I post a video each day uh, talk about my fast cooking system uh, which will help you uh, make home cooking as part of your daily routine because of its efficiency when you use the flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying and template based cooking you can make home cooking practical, uh, creative, as well as fun. So if you'd like to learn more about this cooking system, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking and I will see you tomorrow.